Dr. Jason Saunders here with HBOT USA. We wanted to do a special video specifically on hyperbaric oxygen as it relates to COVID-19. So no doubt coronavirus, COVID-19 has impacted all of us. Uh, for some of us, it's directly impacted our own health or it's impacted the health of somebody we love. Uh, for sure, it's impacted the economy and our businesses. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're all struggling uh, with this virus one way or another, and in some cases, multiple ways. We wanted to do a video specifically about hyperbaric oxygen. I, we are getting a tremendous amount of uh, emails and inquiries and questions regarding uh, the use of oxygen therapies as it relates to fighting infections in general, as well as specifically fighting this particular virus. And so, you know, we're seeing more and more information coming out that uh, this virus is different than other viruses that we've seen in the past. Uh, we're seeing some evidence to show that maybe uh, the way it's impacting lung tissue uh, is very different than other respiratory infections. Uh, there was a video that went out by a Dr. Kyle Seidel recently talking about, you know, this seems to be much more of a cellular oxygenation issue than it is a more typical ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome. In fact, that a lot of these patients don't have respiratory symptoms and their heart rate seems to be normal. Their respiration rate seems to be relatively normal. However, they are not able to oxygenate properly. Now, we're not exactly sure why that is. We're not exactly sure what the mechanism is, but we do know a few things. We know that uh, in order for us to absorb oxygen, we need a pressure gradient. So when we live in the atmosphere that we live in, there's a pressure of air being exerted on us. We don't feel that pressure, but it's there. And that pressure creates a gradient that the oxygen levels outside of our body are higher than the oxygen levels inside of our body. So when we breathe in, it allows diffusion of oxygen across the alveola into our circulatory system and then bind to red blood cells. Now, what we also know is if people are having acute oxygen issues, uh, the examples that have been used are like being in an airplane at altitude and the cabin pressure being released or, um, you know, synonymous with acute mountain sickness. In these particular cases, the ability of the pressure gradient to drive oxygen into our cells is being hindered and therefore there is an inability to oxygenate our tissues. Well, that's exactly what hyperbaric helps do. So hyperbaric creates an artificially pressurized environment. So it increases that pressure gradient far beyond what our atmosphere does. The greater we can create a gradient, the greater diffusion of oxygen we can get. So even if there's an issue like with this particular virus, where it's impacting our ability to drive oxygen onto our red blood cells perhaps, and to keep oxygen saturation levels high, if we can increase the oxygen pressure outside of our body, we can drive more oxygen into our circulatory system. Even though that oxygen may not be bound to a red blood cell, it's increasing free floating oxygen and free floating oxygen can freely inter, inter, interact with our tissues and our cells, thereby increasing the total oxygen that our cells and tissues are able to get, even if there are issues with hemoglobin and red blood cell saturation. Therefore, it's become a stance of mine and of other hyperbaric doctors, leading hyperbaric doctors in the U.S., that the use of hyperbaric oxygen, especially earlier on uh, in this disease process, could really make a big difference in these patients being able to maintain oxygen levels to their cells and oxygen levels to their tissues, buying them time to heal and recover from the virus itself. Does it mean that we don't need ventilators? We don't know yet. Does it mean that ventilators are the wrong tool to use in those end stages of the disease? We don't know yet. There is a call for actual a research study, a pilot study. I think it's for 40 patients in New York. It was just published, I think, two or three days ago. They're just going to start accepting patients in the next couple of days, I believe, to start to monitor this, to, to check for its effectiveness. But ultimately, the principles are there, and it makes a lot of sense to do it that way. What we're seeing is that most patients who end up on ventilators, uh, unfortunately, aren't making it. Ventilators help with the mechanical aspect of breathing, 
but they don't help with the driving of oxygen into our cells. And so if it's an ARDS, a respiratory distress, where you're unable to breathe or there's fatigue in the breath, then using a mechanical ventilation system absolutely helps. But even Dr. Seidel in that video talks about a high flow uh, system instead. So basically decreasing the pressure of the ventilator itself, but increasing the oxygen levels, thereby increasing again oxygenation. So ultimately, if this is an oxygenation issue, far more than it is a more typical pneumonia, then getting oxygen levels up, whether it's through one atmosphere, you know, sea level, let's say where we are right now, sea level oxygenation, but just higher levels of oxygen, or it's by using an artificially pressurized environment driving diffusion of oxygen across the membrane into our circulatory system, one way or another, we need to be getting oxygen into these patients. There have been a few case studies. Uh, there have been a few white papers and a few articles written on these topics. I'm going to attach them below to this video so that I can share this information also. And if you have any questions, obviously feel free to comment. Uh, I think this is really important information that needs to get out there. Um, we need to start changing the paradigm and changing the way we're thinking about this disease. And I'm hoping that this video may help that process. Thanks a lot. And we'll talk to you soon.